We remain in the portion of the offseason in which Daryl Moore and the Sixers are linked to, to just about every big-name free agent and superstar there there is. And now the curtain has been peeled back a little further to a chess move that Daryl Morey seems to be contemplating here, that involving the most controversial player in this, this year's NBA draft, Bronny James here. So we got this report here originating from Brett Siegel of Clutch Points here, saying that the Philadelphia 76ers have emerged as a third possible suitor for Bronny James. Now, everyone has their own opinion of Bronny James. And to lead with mine here, he's not an NBA player right now. Now, he's a guy that played the six most minutes per game on a USC team that wildly underperformed. He's a guy that shot 26% from beyond the three-point arc, averaged about five points per game. He's just not there quite yet. That part of my frustrations with this entire process is I do think a great deal of these decisions have not been made in what is the best interest of Bronny James. Now, with all that being said, I do think there's a world where eventually Bronny James is an NBA level player. That I think the best route for him would have been to go back to school for another year, to have a cleaner route in which you're not going through heart issues in your preseason, away from the team, all these things. But the bottom line is the situation is what it is. Now, with the Sixers showing some interest, I do think this is really interesting to note because timing is everything. And when did these reports surface? But just a couple hours after it was revealed that the New Orleans Pelicans are planning to defer the Los Angeles Lakers first round pick until 2025, clearing the way for LA to select 17th overall in the 2024 NBA draft. And why I think it's interesting that the Lakers have the 17th overall pick is because the Sixers have the 16th overall pick. And this feels like the type of leverage play that Daryl Morey is at least testing the waters, saying, what are you going to do if I draft your son, LeBron? We know LeBron's situation here, that as of now, he could be a free agent, that he could absolutely opt out of his contract and join whatever team he sees fit. And there has been all these conversations dating back to really since LeBron has opened his mouth, speaking about wanting to play with his son. Now, to LeBron's, I guess, credit here, or just laying out the situation as a whole, that the the Lakers, LeBron, and Bronny James himself have all done and made an effort to kind of distance that. And for a quote that we have from Brian Winhurst here, he says, quote, over the last few months, Rich Paul, who's the agent for LeBron and Bronny James, has made an effort to part the concept that drafting Bronny James means you're getting LeBron. I do believe LeBron's going to opt out of his contract, and leaving optionality for playing with Bronny is on the list, but I don't think it's at the top. I do think he's going to be back with the Lakers. So for Bronny's sake here, I feel bad for him personally. And I do think that it is notable that it is LeBron's goal to play with his kid. It might not be Bronny's goal to play with his dad. And I also feel bad from the standpoint for he's attempting to fill quite literally the group, the biggest shoes in NBA history. That no matter how great Bronny James is, he's never going to be his father. And all indicators we're seeing, he likely isn't going to be all that close. That I do think the mold that he's going to follow as a basketball player is more of kind of this Contavious Caldwell Pope type role player, which still can be an excellent and valuable basketball player, but it's certainly not LeBron James. Now, as we bring in this whole conversation, I do have to shift gears to clutch sports here. Now, I am not a fan of clutch sports and their management and most specifically rich paul being at the heart of it now one of the quotes that he rubbed me the wrong way with already during this pre draft process was here saying that rich paul says he has zero interest in his client Bronny james signing a two-way contract quote teams know that i'm not doing that and this once again circles back to the power balance between agents and players that it should never be confused that rich paul you work for Bronny james Bronny James does not work for you. And if the best route for Bronny James is to sign a two-way contract, that is what should be done. And to be perfectly honest, I think that would be a pretty great situation for Bronny James, that he's just not NBA ready right now, and the goal should be to bring him to where he is. If that's taking time and spending it in the G League, then so be it. And yes, I understand you could have a standard NBA contract be sent down to the G League. I understand Rich Paul's mindset here that he wants the most guaranteed money for his clients, but I just feel like... A lot of times that Rich Paul is prioritizing himself or the way that he negotiates deal a little bit over what the clients actually need. And to give another example of this that he specifically rubbed me the wrong way with, during the Ben Simmons saga in, in Philadelphia, as Ben was demanding his holdout, that Rich Paul canceled a bunch of charity events for Tyrese Maxey, who is also a clutch sports client, canceled a bunch of Maxey's charity events as a leverage play to get a Simmons deal done. 
And once again, that is where the power balance is wrong in my mind. That in both these situations, that Rich Paul, you work for Ben Simmons, and Rich Paul, you work for Tyrese Maxey. It is not the other way around. And using Tyrese Maxey, who at the time was like a lower profile client in order to get a bigger profile client in Ben Simmons out the door, was just wrong in my mind. So that is the stuff that bothers me specifically about Rich Paul. Now, with all this being said, Rich Paul is still the agent of Tyrese Maxey, and Daryl Morey is still going to have to step up the table and negotiate that contract. So at the minimum, there is going to be some face-to-face -face hard conversations and negotiations between the Sixers and Rich Paul as it pertains to Tyrese Maxey. And by the way, Maxey and Braun think quite highly of each other, that they train together at Chris Johnson Hoops. They obviously have the same management agency, which were, were Rich Paul there, that there is a relationship there. And that if you are pl plotting this, I will take Bronny under the condition that LeBron James is coming to Philadelphia. I can live with that. I can get behind it. And frankly, I think these Sixers would be upgraded to likely championship favorites if that is the case. But there's a lot of ifs in that sentence there. And you have to get that guarantee before you're pulling the trigger on that draft selection. That the worst case for these Sixers is if you don't get that, that LeBron stays in LA. And then you take his son, who's several years away from being a rotation player. That would be the worst case scenario for the Sixers team. So you cannot draft Bronny James just to draft Bronny James. If you are drafting Bronny James to bring in his father, and add LeBron James to the Sixers team, sign me up. But unless that is a guarantee and you more or less know that is coming and understand that can't technically be said, although, again, Tyrese, man, this is your time to shine. This is your Mr. Personality. Everyone likes you. You can work the strings. You got these connections. This is when we need you to work those tampering strings as we've seen star players do on so many often occasions. Now, with LeBron here, I get the concerns. The guy's about to turn 40 years old next year, but I think it's a little lost in all these conversations when speaking about LeBron. It's always, it's amazing what he's doing at his age. It's amazing how good he still is. Forget about the at his age part. He's just good. He's still absolutely a top 20 NBA player, a guy who had a really good season. And to dive into his stats overall, just this year, playing 71 games at age 39, averaging 25.7 points, 8.3 assists, 7.3 rebounds. Also has increased his three-point volume over the years. Shot 41% from three this year, which is really impressive stuff on 5.1 attempts per game. Last year, he attempted as many as 6.9 three-pointer attempts per game. And what we could see with LeBron James here is, is there will be the nights where he can coast, where he can pass the baton, allow Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid to do their thing, carry the scoring load, and there will be the nights where he will be necessary to this team. That there's no doubt you can't find a player in NBA history with the amount of experience and amount of championship experience as LeBron James. Adding him to that Sixers core, pairing him with guys that he seems to like, Tyrese Maxey specifically here that I'm really referencing, and seems to be at least some sort of respect to Joel Embiid, that there is no sort of hatred there. It has to be a little bit appealing to him that I think even with the Lakers, who aren't the worst team in the NBA, there are certainly situations better than them. I think it's very fair to say that if LeBron's dead set and wants another championship ring, you have a better chance right here in Philadelphia than you do hanging out there in Los Angeles. And if your son is coming to the party and being a part of the team as well, it could be an appealing offer to throw his way. But I bring all this up to say is Daryl Morey is creating every option possible. That this very much feels like a play where he's a little bit testing the waters. These don't feel like reports of the Sixers are absolutely going after Bronny James. It feels like Daryl Morey sticking it out there saying, what would happen if I do? So LeBron, I know you're talking this tough game that you, you're not as content of following your son wherever he goes. But what if where he's going is Philadelphia? Would that change things there? So in my mind, once again, my ultimate conclusion here. I need that to be certain, that I need Daryl Morey or Tyrese Maxey or whoever needs to know in this situation to know that if the Sixers are going to take Bronny James, that it come in with a package deal. If there's no guarantee and they waste the 16th pick on a guy that, frankly, I think likely three years down the line might be a rotation piece, that's a really bad decision. But who knows what conversations are going around in the hallways right now. I know there were some reports of both Daryl Morey and Elton, Bl Elton Brand flying out to Los Angeles last week. So I don't know anything more than that. We will see how things shake out. But this is certainly a noteworthy story to follow. And I'm curious what the leaks are from now until the draft. If the Sixers continue to hear their name in, in discussions, there might be a little bit of smoke to this. For the time being, we're going to pump the brakes and think about it. But if LeBron James can come to Philadelphia, you do it 10 times out of 10. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Are you in the same page as me or, or are you not interested in seeing LeBron and Bronny James in a Sixers jersey at any point? Let me know your thoughts. Make sure you're smashing that subscribe button to keep the Sixers Digest family growing. Drop it a like to let me know you're listening and talk to you next time right here on Sixers Digest.